What's up everybody? Jack here, and today I've got an update for you. About 40, 45 days ago, I made this sheet to help myself track things that I know make me more happy, which leads to me doing more work. What I've learned about myself, and I think this is true about most humans, we, we tend to try and force things out of ourselves. But if we really care about results, the better approach is to identify all the things that we need to be at our best and do what we can to fill our days with the things that we need to be at our best, most feeling motivated, feeling happy, feeling fulfilled. And these actions lead to us accomplishing all the things that we want. But if we focus too directly on just doing the things that we want, it's so easy to get burned out. So what I'm trying to focus on is building the environment where I am at my best to proceed and perform well when I am doing the things that I want. Does that make sense? And so what happened here is I identified five things that I think are really important and five things that I don't think are as important. And the five, th these five things, these stretch things, I didn't even track. I just kind of was like, okay, I'm aware of these, okay? And then these rules are the ones that I viewed as very important, okay? So what were my five things? The first one was I can't have any coffee or tea, just no caffeine in general without food. This, or yeah, without eating food, and then I can have coffee. So basically, like, if I eat a sandwich or a cup of bananas, I can have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, but I can't just have a cup of coffee because this causes me to suppress my appetite and one of the most recurring problems in my whole life is that I don't eat properly. I go days where I just get in this mode where I stop eating and I may oh, maybe only eat like 800 calories or 1,000 calories. And you can't really live that way. It's, there's so many problems that that causes, but it's so habitual in me to, to not eat as much. Um, and there's a lot of circumstance that led me to be that way. And I understand that about myself and I have to combat it. So for me, it is genuinely harmful for me to do things that suppress my appetite. I have to do things in a way that prevent my appetite from being suppressed or reduce the suppression or increase my appetite whenever possible. Because ultimately, the thing that holds me back more than anything in my life is headaches. Because when I have a headache, I am not feeling as good about anything that I think about. It is lowering my ambitions, lowering my potential. By reducing the amount of time I spend alive with a headache, I directly increase the amount of energy and effect that I have. So I have to identify all the times that I have headaches and figure out what is causing those headaches. And I used to believe that it was something that was far away and abstract and random, but now after years and years of really paying attention to my habits, I see that there is an explanation for almost every single headache I ever feel. There is very, very few situations where I can honestly tell myself, I have a headache and I don't know why. I may want to say that, oh, I'm hydrated, when really, was I drinking a cup of water every hour for the past 12 hours? Because if I wasn't, I'm probably not as hydrated as I'd like to think. Just because I thought about consuming water and had a cup of water, and I have that memory in a period of recent time, doesn't mean that that's enough. Because realistically, in a day, you need to have about 10 of those memories. That's really recurring. That's really regular. It's so recurring that you need to always have access to water, right? I'm learning that. That's important because dehydration is huge. And that's for most people. I'm pretty good about the dehydration now. But food, that is also another contributor for headaches for me. There's basically four major contributors for headaches for me. There's lack of water, lack of food, 
overconsumption of alcohol, or any consumption of nicotine products. Um, and I can also get headaches from smoking marijuana or cannabis, but it's not as likely to trigger it. Like, if I'm not doing those four things, I can smoke a lot of cannabis without getting a headache. But if I'm doing one of these things, then the cannabis is a trigger as well. It's kind of like uh, if one of these other four things isn't true or is true, like I'm drinking alcohol, then if I smoke a joint, it will make my headache worse. Whereas if I'm not, if I'm well hydrated, I've eaten, I haven't been drinking alcohol, and I haven't consumed any nicotine products, uh, whether those are vapes or cigarettes, then I'm usually very able to just not get a headache no matter what I do. Um, those four things are basically the big obstacles in, in my life right now that I'm trying to address and identify with this philosophy of how do I nurture myself and give myself everything that I need, okay? That's the mentality, right? Now let's sum up what this chart is, and I'll give you some time to kind of reflect here. You are welcome to use this. If you want to just replace this with your own things, I am now about to improve this document to make it better because I made this 40-something days ago and I've been using it and now I have a better understanding of what I should do, okay? But if you want it, the link is in the description of this video. Just make a copy and you can do whatever you want. It's free. So what is this? It is sort of a calendar and you just fill in when you fail or succeed with certain rules. I actually planned to break this rule today, but I ended up uh, getting like occupied doing other stuff, and then by the time I did smoke, it was already three hours awake, so it didn't matter. But you can see like April 15th, I did not do well on April 15th. I broke all except one of my rules. And ultimately, every single one of these rules I broke except the no hitting cigarettes one. Um, I didn't have a really intense nicotine addiction, to be honest, at least relatively to other people, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't an addiction that was holding me back and specifically not bringing any kind of real positivity into my life. Um, and basically what was happening is a lot of my friends smoke and I would see them smoking and I want to share an experience with them. And so I would want to hit their cigarette and talk and that kind of thing. And it, it's an innocent desire because it's just the desire to share something with someone I care about a lot. But it opens the world to having the addictions that your friends have. And you have to be really, really careful. Um, so I, I needed to be like, okay, this, I really needed to tell myself over and over again, this is not positive for me. I am thinking that I will get something out of it, but that thing that I want can be achieved just by talking to my friend while they are smoking and looking at the cigarette and feeling happy that I'm developing the self-control to not be controlled by that sight. That is the experience that I can use to replace sharing a cigarette with a friend, is feeling good about not smoking and still sharing social experience with the friend, not making them feel bad or whatever, just not bringing it into myself. That is something that's really, really valuable. And I see now that because for me, it really is like a switch. I understand that that isn't something I can have exceptions to. Like there aren't times where it's going to be beneficial to smoke a cigarette. It's like it, it wakes you up for a moment, maybe, but it goes away so quick that any kind of positivity gained from that is it's a sacrifice for your future. And I've seen people die from this. I watched my father die. I understand that reality. And it doesn't make sense to give up your health for a cigarette when there's so many healthier things that can give you the things that you think only cigarettes will give you. The reality is you can just get addicted to anything. Like, go get addicted to eating chocolate or something, you know? You're better off than having a cigarette addiction. A cigarette addiction is one of the more dangerous addictions. Kind of, it's like COVID, actually, because it won't kill you necessarily, but it leads to large proportions of death, yet a lot of people around you are going to be doing things that make that seem like they don't care, you know? They're smoking cigarettes, and m me included, even though I watched my father die, 
I still participated and would join my friends when they were smoking cigarettes, especially if I really cared about the people and was close to them. I knew that, right? But I would still feel good sharing that experience. And that's the dangerous part about it, right? But I'm not worried about this anymore. I don't think I really need to track it. So now I'm going to change these rules, right? Basically, I don't need to do this fifth one. However, these stretch things I'm seeing now, there shouldn't be like, oh, rules and the things that you want to be able to do. There should just be the things that you do because you know it will make you happy and at your best. And basically, I haven't been getting any exercise and I haven't been focusing as much on cleaning. And these two things have caused me to feel frustrated with myself and a little bit resentful and have caused a lot of the feelings that these things are kind of meant to accommodate. And I see now that it's because you can't just make perfect rules. You have to make good rules and then improve them and improve them and improve them and improve them. The idea is not to force yourself to be something you're not. It's to understand yourself and know what kinds of things really make you feel happy. There are things you can do every day that will lift you out of the deepest depression you have the problem is that you have to do these things even when you feel zero desire to do them. It's not an instant reward thing. It's like a you feel better in a couple hours thing, and which is pretty fast, but it really shows how short our attention spans are, right? So let's figure out which rules I'm going to keep here. Definitely keeping this one. Definitely keeping the food one. The alarms, I'm going to... I'm keeping this, but the format's changing a bit because basically I made a bunch of routines in Google, right? For example, okay, Google, start Wednesday routine. Sure, here's Cozy Mornings, a Sunday chill mix musical note on YouTube Music. Okay, Google, stop. It totally misunderstood me. That was not right at all. Okay, Google. Start Wednesday routine. Oh, it's because I'm saying start. Okay, playing Cozy Mornings, a Sunday chill mix musical. Okay, Google. YouTube. Stop. Okay, Google. Wednesday routine. Currently in Managua, it's 34 and partly cloudy. Today, it will be partly cloudy with a forecasted high of 36 and a low of 24. In Managua tomorrow, it will be partly cloudy, with a high of 37 and a low of 25. It is Wednesday. If you are meeting with Sweet this week, the meeting is in one hour. Eat some food and walk. You will feel better soon. Okay, Google. Stop. So basically, that happens automatically every single day based on my schedule, based on the meetings I have on a recurring, predictable basis with other people. And I'm, I'm really trying to be as nurturing to myself as possible and really encouraging, right? And one of the other things that I'm realizing is that um, I'm pretty sad in the mornings. Like, I don't regularly wake up and feel, like, excited about life and working on stuff. And sometimes that feeling lingers throughout the whole day, depending on what's going on in my life. Like if there was just some kind of particularly stressful event that was really taxing with someone I care about, um, or like a hard conversation, then uh, I may feel that way for a day or two, right? It, it's not always a temporary thing. But what I'm understanding is that there's a series of actions that I can perform that will almost always lift me out of that state. The problem is that when I'm feeling like that, I don't want to do anything. I feel lazy. I feel like the only thing I care about is just being in bed and being comfortable in that moment. But the act of doing that makes me not feel good. And I really understand this, but I need to kind of, there's a lot of things I understand, but I don't actively apply every day in my life. And I'm really trying to bring these understandings closer to me and trying to figure out how can I make this information more convenient? How can I remind myself, right? So one of the things I'm doing with that, what you just heard, actually, that's a Google Home, by the way. And you can set them up, their speakers, and you can be like, okay, Google, how many people have died from coronavirus? 
Sorry, I don't have information about the Managua department, but according to Wikipedia, as of the 23rd of April, two deaths from coronavirus disease out of 10 total confirmed cases have been reported in Nicaragua. Keep in mind that the data changes rapidly, so it may be inaccurate or out of date at times. Information about reported cases is also available on the World Health Organization website. So you can you can just talk to it, right? And and if if you need information when you're having a conversation with a friend, you guys don't remember a date or don't remember a band or something, you can literally just Google stuff with your voice. It's incredibly useful, um, especially while you're working. There's times where like you're working or you're playing a game or doing something, and you don't really want to go to a different tab or go to a computer or your phone, and you can just ask. It's incredibly versatile. But basically, this allows you to set up kind of routines that go off at certain times. So in the examples I've just showed you, I triggered the routine of it telling me the current weather of today, of tomorrow, and saying some motivational stuff, reminding me what day it is while I'm in bed, telling me I'll feel better if I go outside, I'll go on a walk, water the plants, these kinds of things, reminding me of that information. You can literally just write stuff, and it tells you that whenever you want at any time. So and the difference here is you guys heard me trigger it with my voice, but they're actually triggered to just go off at certain times of day. So at 6 a.m. on two days of the week, that goes off and it wakes me up by starting to talk and telling me what's happening. Because I'm meanwhile going to be in bed being like, fuck this, I don't want to get out of bed, I want to stay here. Um, and I gotta fight that. I really gotta get myself out of bed, but in a nurturing way, not in a hurtful way. Because anytime I try and force myself to change, I get like, I, I don't wanna say spiteful, but I guess it's spiteful to myself. I, I don't know. Like, if I try and force myself to do something, I may be able to do it for a bit, but then I just like whip back and I don't wanna do it. And I'm like, fuck it. And I, I don't like embracing that part of myself. And if I nurture and love and I'm kind to myself, then I don't do that. So it's, it's much more effective for me to just slowly really understand myself and the things that I need to change, okay? So this alarm thing, I'm gonna keep, uh, but there's more into it now. Like these alarms are actually Google alerts and they're combined with playing music. Instead of actually an alarm just going off, I wake up to being told the weather and then music playing and being reminded that I'd really benefit if I went on a walk or something like that. Because I say this stuff now, and when I wake up, thinking it enough isn't alone. But maybe if a robot tells me what I know that to be true, maybe that'll be more motivating. I don't know yet. I don't know. But we'll see. Okay? So I don't need this one going to change this one. Also, going to combine these, so there's going to be way more than five. Um, I don't need to worry about the Spanish content website, because that is something that is my current focus of work, and if I focus directly on it, I'm going to burn myself out. I need to focus on everything that puts me in a good position to increase the chance that I will work on it. And once I'm established all those habits, yeah, sure, I can be like, okay, i got to work on it that kind of thing. But there's no point in doing that now until I've maximized all of my supplementive habits. Because if I play my cards right, I can just have a routine of doing the things I love and enjoy that make me happy every single day. Why not do that, right? Especially because the work I do is way better when I'm happy. It's genuinely more interesting much better at these kind of emotional moment connections where I need to share positivity and encouragement and enthusiasm. These are way easier to do when I'm not feeling like empty, right? And I, I don't, I'm not saying I feel empty all the time. To be honest, I feel pretty happy most of the time. But I understand that, especially in the morning, I'm pretty prone to not feeling so motivated at all. I tend to be more motivated in the night after I've gone through an afternoon of feeling crappy too. <laughs> but not always, right? Right now I'm feeling pretty motivated and it's 12. You know, today has been a good day. So also with Sweet, um, I wanted to be more useful to them. And I feel that I've actually been in a good goal with Sweet. I, I think I feel confident about that. Um, basically, Sweet's one of my major main consulting clients and I meet with them twice a week. 
or sorry, twice a month, and then I also have like hourly work in addition to that that I do based on the meetings, okay? Uh, skateboard. This is something I actually think is really important that I wasn't doing because I kind of perceived it as a minor thing, but I really, I want to be a person who is practicing skateboarding every day because I need exercise and I really enjoy the dexterous, dexterous act of skating, especially because you can just pick a trick and just try and do it 10 times every day, only for like, even if that's only like five minutes, you can literally skate every day for five minutes and still see a lot of progress over months. It, it doesn't really matter how long you're doing it. Of course, it's going to be more beneficial to do it longer, but the most beneficial thing is to do it every day or do it with regularity and also have some breaks. Like it may be every like third or fourth week, you take a couple days off or a week or something. With skating in particular, you notice how like you'll stop doing something, come back a week or two after trying and trying and trying, and boom, you're just good at it. You're better. You improved. After you warm up, you, you improved. You're better than you were before, even though you weren't doing it. And that effect is really noticeable with skateboarding. I, I don't know why that is, but it's more noticeable to me than with other things. Maybe because skating is all about, like, at least for me, it's about, like, attempting tricks and failing and failing and failing and failing and failing. And then, like, oh, you get it one out of every ten times. And then you keep going, and it's like, whoa, two out of every ten times, you know? Like, you can, you can do it sometimes. And that's what's interesting about it, because it shows you more about your mentality and your current state, particularly the state of your body and the state of your mind. Because there's some times where you know you can do something, but you're just out of it and you're not paying attention and you're not focused and you're tired and you're failing every time you try or you're only able to do it occasionally. Whereas normally when you're at your average, you can perform it like maybe 50% of the time, right? Very few people can land a trick 100% of the time. Like even the, the very best people, like failing a trick's a much more common sight among skaters than actually succeeding one, right? Because the whole point is to get to the point where you can do that. And to enjoy that process of learning and all this, it's, it's really beneficial. So I'm keeping this one, and I'm also prioritizing these two. Um, I want to, I, I need to conceptually understand that every day I need to spend time sweeping and mopping because that gives me this momentum of patience that then translates directly into my work and the other things that I do. I want to be a person who prepares myself for all the things that I'm about to do, not a person who just does things in, to res in response to my current emotions and what I'm doing. That works in some ways because it helps be more present and aware of my body and what I'm feeling and what I want, but at the same time, um, in order to really change, you have to be able to push yourself and, and struggle a bit in some ways. So you can't just be like that all the time. I see now that there's definitely a, a, a flexibility of sorts that's necessary um, with listening to yourself and what you want in the moment. Because sometimes, like, just because you want to stay in bed, it doesn't mean you should stay in bed. Um, and even if you didn't sleep that much, that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, getting more sleep is a good thing. It, it can be. Like, don't get me wrong. It really depends on who you are. Uh, I have a tendency to sleep too much. I need sleep less. It's important. You might have the opposite problem. Maybe you don't sleep enough, and this makes you more irritable. You're more grouchy than other people because you don't get enough sleep. Maybe you need to sleep more. You know, it's different depending on who you are. It really depends. So I encourage you to use these and just change the goals to things maybe related to this like with the same mentality but are tailored towards you because i don't know what you're you've struggled with in your past i don't know what you've been through i don't know who you are um so you're the only one who can really identify these kinds of things and just because there's going to be like eight or ten or however many i have at the end of this that doesn't mean you need that same amount i uh, I would encourage you to start with between three and five and slowly add stuff. You, you're not going to make it perfect from day one. You're going to need to do it slowly over time, okay? So uh, also the cooking thing, for now, I'm not going to worry about this. It is true that I'm happier when I'm cooking, but really it's more about eating. Um, I like to cook. I love it, and it's fun, but it's kind of like the Spanish content website. 
I'm going to be doing it more if I'm putting myself in scenarios where I'm at my best and I'm awake and I'm eaten food already and I've activated my appetite. Um, that part's really important. So there's some other things I've been considering, like watching a YouTube video every day. I love YouTube, and YouTube has changed my life more than anything else. So many parts of my life now are because of things related to YouTube, because of people I know, because of stuff that happened on YouTube. Maybe not directly, but absolutely indirectly. It's really changed a lot about me and my circumstance. And so I, I really love watching YouTube videos, especially from p other YouTubers who do it for a life. Because I love to see how they're handling their audience, what kind of content they're making, how they're dealing with subscriptions, how they're monetizing their channel, if they're just relying on ad revenue, or if they're creating digital products outside of YouTube. That, that's really fascinating to me. Anytime I see someone who's doing that, where they're, they're relying on YouTube, but not only on YouTube, I think that's really, really impressive. And I've learned so much from other YouTubers. And YouTube is essentially an infinity degree. You could watch a hundred videos on YouTube every day, and you'd never run out of content. There's so much content being created that it's impossible to see all of it. Even if you froze it today and stopped it, you wouldn't be able to get through all the videos on YouTube in your lifetime. There's an infinite amount of information. Yeah, technically, there's a finite amount at this exact moment in time, but boom, another video just got uploaded. More, more are being uploaded right now. Hundreds have been uploaded. It's insane. You have access to every problem or every solution to every problem in your life. Whether you want to admit that or, or not, the answers exist somewhere hidden in a YouTube video. And if you're not watching YouTube videos, you're not going to be exposed to that, right? And especially if you're, if you're letting yourself be exposed to like cable news and all these things, and that's all that you're, you're letting, that voice is so drama-focused, and it's... Ah, oh, it's so frustrating because it really puts you in a position where your mentality is going to be more prone to procrastination and depression and frustration and all these neuroticies and negative emotions that make you get in the way of yourself because you're so preoccupied by all this crazy shit that's wrong with the world and you're not focused on the great life that you have in front of you. We are so lucky to be alive. It is amazing that we can live at a time like this. I, I understand that you may be scared and you may think that the world is hard and that there's a lot of trauma because that is true. There is trauma in the world. But so recently, as little as 100 years ago, if you got to 20 or 30 years old, a lot of people you knew were already dead. They died of tuberculosis or of influenza or in the war. Like, so many people were dying everywhere in the world for so many different reasons. It was way more toxic. You weren't able to talk about anything anywhere. Nobody really had freedom of speech. Every country involved in the world wars was prohibiting their press. There was, they were a filter. The government was a literal filter. There wasn't anywhere that was immune to that. Don't kid yourself at all. There was propaganda everywhere. Propaganda isn't a communist thing. It's not a democratic thing. Propaganda is a, a way that an, a, an, a, a government can participate in a form of abuse. All governments are capable of doing these kind of things. And we have it so much better off. It's so frustrating for me to hear my peers, especially other young people, complaining about the reality we live in. Because we are in a world that we can actually do anything. We are our only obstacle. You're your only real problem, and I'm my only real problem. You may want to say, oh no, I don't have access to information. Oh no, I'm not skilled enough. Oh no, I wasn't born to the right kind of people. No, I don't know the right kind of people. No, I have this disease and it means I am this way. Or 
I have ADD, ADHD. I can't focus, therefore. I, I, it's, it's out of my control. And that's the part that's horrible. Because it's not out of your control. Nothing in our lives. If you are a human in this modern era, there is always a feasible chance that you can take control of your life and your circumstance and use the internet and technology to drastically change the way that you live. You can fix anything, no matter who you are. If there is a problem, it has a solution. Don't get caught up in all of this bitching and complaining and moaning and bitterness and resentment. Because the reality is we live in a world filled with people who are ungrateful for the life that they have because they live a life full of convenience and they don't feel an, a meaningful attachment to the things that they do. But that doesn't mean that life isn't amazing. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't try and figure out what to do to make the best out of your life. These things are so important. You must have the philosophy that every problem has a solution. There is nothing that isn't solvable. There's only solutions that you don't see. Life is all about forcing yourself to act like the solutions exist so that you can see that they were there in front of you the whole time. Please don't get caught up in the negativity that the world's in. Because it's true that it exists, but trust me, compared to our parents and their parents and their parents, we have it so good. We have such amazing lives and so many of our ancestors sacrificed good, happy lives so that their children could have lives of meaning and have lives of freedom. And we have that. It is our duty and our responsibility to be grateful for it and to spread that as much as we can to other people in this world, to make sure that we are improving the lives of the people around us in every way that we can because we are incredibly lucky to have this luxury of being alive at this point in time. All right, there you go. Hopefully you're feeling motivated. Now let's figure out the finishes to this sheet. Are there any other rules that I need to think about? I think the main things I was missing was the physical activity one and the cleaning. And a lot of these are things that are accomplished in the very beginning of the day. They're not things that I do at the end. And that's really because they are with this mentality of how can I set myself up to be at my best and to have the highest motivations and hopes and dreams that I, I have throughout most of the day instead of how it is now where I have these periods of time where I feel motivated but then there's also this fear that I'm going to run out of that motivation and I feel like I got to do this stuff now and the ironic part is that that fear is what gets rid of the motivation and I know this and I know that I can be better and this is how I'm doing it right so let's make some changes here we're gonna change this I'm gonna make this this guy here bigger. Uh, let's just do it this way. I guess we gotta go there actually. Okay. And five, six, seven, eight. Were they gonna be more? Let's see. Let's move all these down a little bit. I'm gonna be getting rid of some. The first one is gonna be. I'm gonna try and order order them by priority. And this one is an all-day rule that's really important. Oh, and I remember another one. So I drink alcohol sometimes. Uh, in general, I'm much more prone to negative consequences of alcohol than other people. Um, like throughout my whole life, I haven't been able to drink like a lot of my friends. I, I just get more headaches. I feel shittier. I have worse hangovers. I've never felt like, oh, I'm a young person who's immune to hangovers. Fuck that. I never had that experience. I just got really bad hangovers basically from day one. So 
one of the things I, I one of the reasons that I, I think that is because of the circumstance of my body. My body is used to operating with less calories than it needs. And this puts me on the edge. I'm much closer to being thrown out of balance and going into a headache state or going to a state where I feel more sleepy or lethargic. Because of these imbalances, I fundamentally exist with because of all my habits throughout my whole life, okay? So um, the other one is going to be no alcohol without food. Um, so I have a habit sometimes I'll have like, especially here because it's really hot, I'll have a cold beer or something like that uh, at some point. But I really shouldn't do that unless I have some food, even if it's a snack. Um, because I, every time I consume alcohol, I get a headache. Like over this past 45 days, I was really good about this first rule about eating um, and establishing that I need to eat food with my caffeine was a, 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 qu a quick change that helped a lot. You can see that there's very, very few days. One day, April 15th, that was the only day that I broke this first rule. Uh, the first rule was one of the ones I was best about keeping. The fifth one was the easiest. And at the time, this was the not hitting friends cigarettes. Um, but because that was like, I didn't have that strong of an addiction, and I had really developed the understanding in myself that it was making me unhappy, um, it, the results of feeling better about it were pretty quick. Like, it didn't take long for me to be like, ah, this is the desire to share that cigarette. But I know that that makes me sad, and I don't want to be sad. So I'm going to admit I have that desire and continue with what I was doing without doing anything about it. Um, that mentality has really grown a lot more in me now. So this one is going to be no alcohol without food. Basically the same as the caffeine rule. No coffee or tea without food and no alcohol uh, without food. Also, this one's very important. I need to eat food within one hour of waking up. Um, I also kind of need to define what food is. Because sometimes I'll just be like, oh, I'll eat a banana. Now, I think that that's okay for now. I want to be in a position where I'm eating more than that. But considering I'm coming from eating nothing, if I really am always eating even just a banana, something that at least has the potential to activate my appetite, that's okay. That's a good point to be at. So I want to get to that point. Once I'm there, then maybe I'll be like, okay, banana doesn't count as food anymore. I got to have like, you know, a bowl of cereal with milk and a banana. Like, you know, or like a sandwich or yogurt and fruit. You know, maybe it's the ingredients. I need to start an ingredient minimum. It's not food if it only has one ingredient. You know, my definition of food, basically, for the context of these rules. So the alarm thing's continuing. Um, I think the cannabis one is important. As you can see, I haven't, I'm pretty good about that. But there are days like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There were five days where I broke that rule and smoked within the first three hours. And I think it was actually one or two more days than that. I, I was pretty good about it. Um, but there, there actually were a lot of days like this where I intended to. But then I got distracted and didn't end up doing it. And then I smoked and then, oh, totally works. One of the things I, I've noticed about uh, cannabis consumption is that uh, it's really easy to do it in excess, especially because a lot of people who smoke cannabis do use it in excess. But it's, it's really important to, to understand that you need to kind of limit yourself. Um, and it really depends what you're trying to go for because there's definitely parts of my life that were so dark and depressing and traumatic. I really was better off just being stoned. Anything that made me able to feel interested in the food I was eating or something in front of me without worrying about all this previous traumas and bullshit that I can't do anything about and it's my reality and it's just, that's the way it is. Like, I can't change it, right? And it's so easy when you're traumatized or depressed or going through that to get lost in all that stuff. And for me, cannabis really helped me push that away and just be in a mentality where I, I just, I'm kind of sedated enough that I, I'm not really thinking about that, but I'm hungry and I'm doing other things and I want to listen to music and I want to garden and like... Sometimes I get stoned and I don't, I don't want to play games. I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit there and, and think and, and be and 
these are good influences for me as as a person that being said i, I know tons of people who can't uh smoke with that kind of regularity because it gives them a lot of anxiety um and for me there's totally times where i get that anxiety but i, I will say that usually i'm anxious already and if i feel anxious because i'm smoking it's probably shame that i'm smoking which i have to address why am i feeling shameful and if it's not that it's probably anxiety that's unresolved that i'm feeling about something but i'm telling myself oh i'm just feeling anxious uh almost every time i'm feeling anxious or i say that i'm like something happened and i might not remember what it is but a part of me knows and it's still affecting me and right now i feel some negative emotions that's what i feel anxious means to me <laughs> okay so the food ones are really important um alarm i think is kind of more important because the alarm is what uh dictates everything else because if i don't wake up then i don't do those things right so let's move that actually i'm gonna paste that here and we're gonna move these down and then put that one there there we go so next the cannabis one that's okay and also I i'm not super worried about when i break it because to be honest like a lot of things in my life happened where i just woke up and i didn't feel shitty and i was just like i'm a smoke and then i make something weird and crazy and it takes forever like that's how this document started that's how uh the ebay drop shipping uh question answer sheet that just shows you exactly what you need to do when all the predictable common problems come up you just like oh here okay next okay cool and then that's it um that sheet really helped uh, a lot of people and it was something i just got i was like i'm gonna make this and then i smoked and i did it right uh, that being said sometimes it holds me back i have a i have a it, it, it's not as simple as oh this is a bad thing this does that I, I really don't think that about cannabis at least for me as an individual however i i do think that excessive consumption is a bad thing that needs to be regulated and monitored and i'm working on consuming cannabis less kind of obsessively in that way um so i think that's important but at the same time like, okay, if I don't do this, but I still do everything else, I feel amazing. Whereas if I don't eat, and then I don't, and then I smoke, uh, I, like, if I smoke and I don't feel good about myself, it's not going to make me feel good about myself. But if there's, if I'm feeling good about myself, even if I smoke, it's not really going to change that, right? So in that way, these other things are more important to my actual like well-being because they're the things that make me feel love to myself uh there's some habits i have that make me feel resentment or frustrated or angry with myself and i have to be really careful about this because i am me being angry at me is kind of dumb you know <laughs> like it's okay sometimes but it's not a pleasant way to go out through the day especially if it's unresolved stuff that doesn't really matter and it, you're not getting any benefit out of that right so Food, also really important. I think this one's going to be probably one of the last ones here. The food the food things are really, really important. Um, okay, alarm's already there. Eat food is already there. These are there. So getting some a exercise is going to be really important. I haven't been doing that at all, and I need to address that. But how important relative to these other things is that? Because I'm trying to or organize this these rules from most important to least important to me as an individual, right? So the one where there's certain times where I at least wake up, even if I go back to sleep after doing some things, that's important because all of these other things hinge on stuff I do after I wake up. So waking up at a certain time is kind of the, the start of all of that, right? So that one's like why it's like a really high priority one, okay? And then it makes sense that the coffee and tea without food is second priority because that is something that causes me to lose my appetite. If I'm eating, if I'm having caffeine and I'm not eating, I'm suppressing my appetite. And my appetite problems have been prevalent throughout my entire life. Very big priority that I do things to change that because it holds me back and I need to have more energy and be less tired. So there's a couple things that I need to change in order to have this as my reality, right?
So food, alcohol, all these things I think are really, really important. So I'm going to move this one down. Uh, this is probably going to be the last one because I care about it because if I smoke a lot, I get more sleepy and I'm trying not to be sleepy too much. But at the same time, being sleepy isn't as detrimental as having a headache. Having a headache is really the thing that hurts me because it causes me to lose a bit of my ambition and my uh, positivity. I have so much free time that when I'm sleepy, I can just take a nap. And when I wake up, I'm going to do something as long as I have fulfilled all of these, these needs that make me feel good. Like there's plenty of times where I don't feel that great and I take a nap and it's like three and I wake up at five and I take a shower and I'm feeling awesome and I do a bunch of stuff. That totally happens. Um, there's times where that happens in the morning. There's times where it happens at the night. Uh, I, I don't know when that's going to happen, but I have observed that every time it does, a lot of these things are true. It means that I've done a lot of these things. I've had some kind of fulfilling conversations with people, I've spent time uh, doing things for myself. I'm being patient, right? So that, that ties into another thing. Uh, I really need to have a daily meditation of some sort, even if it's only 10 minutes. And for me, uh, this probably should be in the afternoon because what I've, what I've noticed about myself is that when I progress through my day, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to feel like uh, I'm not interested in anything, whatever, and then I'll, I'll kind of get over that once I like eat some food, I go outside, I do some stuff. I don't have to go outside necessarily because I understand like it's quarantine time, you know, you can't necessarily just go outside. But even just like walking around here, like there's, we have a bunch of plants out back and watering those is really relaxing and nice. I have like chili peppers. So even if I just go out there and like touch the plants and see if there's bugs and like take care of them, it's really soothing. I really enjoy that. And what I've observed is that when I wake up, I'm very uninterested in anything that requires mental effort but I am interested in things that are relaxing. So like the concept of a cool shower if I'm feeling hot and sweaty in the morning is soothing and I will get out of bed to do that. Or the thought of like seeing how my chilies have grown and seeing how uh, things are going there, that is relaxing and soothing and it doesn't feel taxing. So these kind of things do actually get me out of bed. Um, and that's really important because that's kind of the hard part. Once you're walking about, then you just kind of keep gotten, you just got to distract yourself for like 30, 40 minutes before getting back in bed. And the chance of you getting back in bed is way less likely, unless you're really tired for whatever reason. So um, I guess next in priority would be, let's see, sweeping. I want to I wanna be sweeping and mopping each day. And so there's certain parts, I don't do like the entire house, but there's, I do like my room and some of the common spaces and hallways and stuff. Um, and this is because whenever I do that, I definitely am in a better headspace. Um, if I try and explain the differences between the headspaces I have where I'm less patient and more impulsive and the headspaces where I'm more patient and more present, if I'm cleaning, I'm usually cleaning because I feel okay and I want to improve how I feel in the future. And sometimes I don't feel that way, but I can kind of just force myself to clean or clean anyway, and then I will start to feel that way. It's kind of like I need something to trigger this kind of maintaining perspective, right? So the last one is going to be meditation for 10 minutes and i've set up a routine on google home just like i did with the days right so if i say a certain phrase then it'll start a timer i can also just say set an alarm these kind of things uh, personally i don't really like using music a whole lot when i'm meditating because i feel like um, music is good if you're not used to the concept of meditation and you're like not able to do it like you can't actually shut your eyes for 10 minutes but um, when you meditate with music you're meditating with the energy of the music and that's going to affect what's going on inside you and sometimes that's good sometimes that's what you want but if you're not aware of what's happening inside of you 
then it can confuse it makes it a little bit harder to tell uh, what's happening like uh, basically I have these thoughts where I'll have racing thoughts or whatever and then I, I shut my eyes and I have racing thoughts for another like one or two minutes and I'll have desires to be distracted and do something else but then after that it really starts to slow down and then I start to see like ah okay there was a comment that I misunderstood that made me feel frustrated or something led to me being in this emotional state and even when I lose objects actually usually the best way for me to find something I've forgotten about is to just shut my eyes and stay still and wait and then once I stop rushing myself I just remember where it is I remember where I put it but when I'm in the headspace of rushing and going and these things it's much harder you know so I think that that's going to be important as well um, what are the other rules let's see so far we have the alarms no coffee or tea without food no alcohol without food eat food within an hour of waking up sweep and mop every day i think every every mor every morning is ideal but like if i didn't do it in the morning i should do it in the night you know i shouldn't just be like well i didn't do it then so i'm just gonna say every day um Skateboard for 10 minutes, no weed for 3 hours, and meditation for 10 minutes. And the skating thing, I can do at any point. There's going to be certain times of the day that are better, but I, I really I don't need to be practicing much. I don't need to commit to like 30 minutes or something. I just need to be, I want to be in the habit of doing it every day. I want it to be normal, and it to be not normal if I don't do that, right? Like, that, that's what I want to be like. So, I think we're good for now. This, for the next month or so, I'm going to go with these eight rules now. So I changed it so that we have eight more rules. I'm going to copy uh, some of this real quick. One second. Nice. I'm just making this look a bit more pretty again. Which green was this? Perfect. Now, like that. And we need our bottom border here. Needs to be a thicker border. Oh, maybe I can just copy this. Ooh, here we go. Yeah. I think I'll change this to 10 minutes meditation. Okay, so now this is gonna be a little bit more challenging because it is eight things that I have to do. No, that I want to do because they make me happy every day. Now, let's take this off center. Yeah, there's some inconsistencies there, but I don't really care too much about that. Okay, so these are my rules. And now I also need to change these columns. I'm going to move this over. Uh, actually, instead of moving it over, I'm just going to insert. I should just be able to do this. You can't perform a pace that partially intersects a merge. Oh, man. Got it. I got to unmerge these. Okay, those are unmerged. So now I want to add. Is that going to work? Yeah. Uh, okay, it's not inserting. Paste special. Okay, whatever. Insert one right. Insert one right. I just got to keep doing this. I guess six more times, but I'll do it a little bit more than that just because it's looking like more space because the spacing isn't the same here yet. Okay, there's six, seven, and eight. Nice. Now these, none of these existed until the 23rd of April. So these didn't exist, so I'm going to get rid of them. 
And I need to do that by getting rid of all the borders. What color was it? Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to change the format of these rules because as I scroll down, I want the rules here to stay visible as I'm going up and down. So I can do that by changing the format here to make it more of a row. Like that. And then I'm going to make it a box. Going to make these borders as big as they can be. And now I'm going to copy some of these values here. And we have all of the base values that we need. I'm going to move this. I know it looks Frankenstein-y right now. Um, I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to get rid of this title because I don't need to worry about that right now. And so this box is now four lines? One, two, three, four. No, it's five lines. So that means I need, let's say, six rows. One, two, yeah, six. And if I just paste this right here, there we go. Now I have a section for all of my rules. And I can move these around so that they're spaced a little bit better. And I'm going to do that, probably put it around here. Yeah, that's, I think, better spacing. Is it better like that or like this? OK, it should be in the single column part. So this also needs to go over. By about that much. Now these I need to give more space to. So we're going to move them over to J. And I'm going to change this so that it is uh, Google automatic alarm schedule. So this one is the, the most important one is going to be hard for me to not do because I've automated systems that don't just wake me up, they like wake me up and tell me things and remind me stuff and I set all that up today. So that is going to be interesting. It'll make it really inconvenient to stay, stay asleep. <laughs> as long as it doesn't, like I could totally just unplug the Google Home. <laughs> like I could do that. So I might want to move it so it's not close to my bed, <laughs> but we'll see. I'm only going to do that if I actually find myself uh, escaping, so to speak. So let's keep moving this forward. Here the rules are, they're in the top. Let's format them better. We're going to add these parts are going to have a box and oh, I might also need this part too. Because I'm about to make an area. See how right now we scroll down and this goes out? So how do you know? It, this is rule one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, but it's kind of hard to tell, right? Because you have to count them. So we can make it so there's numbers that are just always there and it's not a problem. So I'm going to make these numbers smaller. And I'm going to get rid of this row right here. I usually try and leave extra rows, but in this case, we need some space. Now we're going to go here. OK, that looks good. Easy to see. Now I need to add a box border here. And need to add all the same color. There we go. Gonna copy the color from here as well. Just to make it look a bit cleaner. Uh, 
And here we will add a wall right there. Okay, cool. So now we're going to lock rows 2 to 4. Okay? So, to, oh, actually, no, rows 2 to 6, we're going to lock all these rows. So I can do that by going to View and clicking Freeze. One row, two rows. I think I can do up to current row. Oh, that's not how it works. Okay. I guess I need to click at the base. Click View, Freeze, up to current row 6. Oh, look at that! So now that takes up a lot of space, but it's okay because now I can always see what the rules are. Not a problem at all. And I'm normally only going to be filling this out like one day at a time, right? So let's see. Let's. Uh, I woke up today. I. So rule two, some of these you can fill out in the beginning because you either did them or didn't do them. But rule two, you technically have to wait till the end of the day because it's true that I haven't had any coffee or tea without food now. But what about if I do that in the afternoon, right? Or at night? So I, I don't really know. I'm probably not going to. So I'll just unfill that if I break it. Um, same with the alcohol one. Like, I don't know. I haven't had any alcohol. So how do I know if I had alcohol without food, right? You can't always fill them out the day. You kind of have to do them. You have to do like yesterdays. And usually what I do is I do like two or three days at a time. And then I come back to the sheet and then I update them. Um, if I let more time than that pass, it's kind of hard to remember. But there's also days where I'm like, I'm going to break this rule. and I'm going to go put it in the document that I broke it. And I feel good about it. Um, now, these other ones, for example, I haven't skated yet. So I'm going to change that one because I haven't done it. Where's the right color? Oh, I'm in the wrong column, aren't I? Yeah, there we go. And this is number seven. I did this one. Number eight, I haven't done the 10 minute meditation yet. So let's make sure that that's not crossed out. Okay, cool. And I guess I can get rid of these rules because they're redundant now. So I can just copy this. There we go. Boom. No more. And now we've made our document. This part was just to show weekends. As you can see, it's a little bit different format, right? Now we've made our document. And it ends on May 3rd. So let's add a lot more to it. We want it to keep going. So I'm going to go like this. Ooh, actually, we need another improvement here. I want to add the day of the week in small text. So let's see, April 23rd is today, and it is Thursday. So Thursday, just like that. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, okay. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So now you just saw me do stuff boring and manually, but you don't need to do that. You can just do this. Watch, we're going to grab everything. And then we're just going to drag it down a bunch. Boom! Look at that. OK, that totally didn't catch the right patterns. You can see there's some stuff we need to change. Let's try again, actually. Sometimes if you give it more data, for example, you do this, then it'll work. Let's try it out. So it's still changing. Now that's not really working. Doing doubles. All right, we're just going to accept that. Oh, there's one more thing I can try, actually. I could do this. Sometimes, depending on where you end it, it creates different pattern. But no, it's still doing it double. So that means that we have to do it this way. Just like this. We want to grab that other one because we're spacing it like that. 
And now let's do a sample. Should just do May 4th and then, yeah, it, it's gonna continue the month and that's okay. So basically what we wanna do is figure out how many days are in May. May has 31 days. Yeah, I know, I should know this. Guess what, guys? I don't. And this is working, right? Saturday, Sunday, Monday, yep, okay, cool. So now we're gonna go here, and it's four. So we need to go like 50 more rows, basically. We're at 104, I'm just gonna go to 150. That was a little bit short. We need to go to 31, oops, no, I'm moving it. We need to go to 31, so. There we go. So now I'm gonna edit this a little bit more. April, May, here we go. Just gonna fix this kind of ghetto-y. Sometimes I do things the fast and effective way. Other times I just do things the manual, tedious way. But I try and do the fast, effective way. Especially when I'm making videos. <laughs> All right. Almost there, just want to get to May. Boom! May and then June 1st. Now let's double check, make sure our, our days are right. Is June 1st a Monday? June 1st is a Monday! That means that we're probably on track. Okay? So now, our document's ready. You guys have seen a little bit about editing, that kind of thing. You guys had some emotional stuff. Here you go. You are welcome to use this in any way that you like. You can copy the document. If you want a link to it, it is in the description of this YouTube video. And I encourage you to edit these rules and make them your own. Just go, Arthur's rules, right? They're not Jack's rules, they're your rules. Change it accordingly. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Best of luck. See you next time. Remember, if you want to book any kind of consulting or talk to me, you can always book a consultation on my Calendly link. It is calendly.com slash Jack Dermot Pittman. It costs $20 per 30-minute session. All right? Best of luck. Ciao!